Hi, and welcome to part three in the Getting Started with AWS IoT SiteWise video series. My name is Dave Malone, and I am an IoT solutions architect for AWS. In the previous videos, we set up our simple assets in the SiteWise console and then connected to our actual machine data via OPC UA, set up the gateway and gateway connector, and we're able to see the data flow into SiteWise. Now that we have our data in SiteWise, we'll dive deeper into asset modeling, creating hierarchies, and defining attributes, metrics, and transforms. Again, SiteWise assets lets you create virtual representations of your industrial operations. To do this, the SiteWise user flow starts with models, and within models, you have assets. In a previous video, we created a model, but when I did that, I did not add any attributes, measurements, transforms, metrics, hierarchies, or tags. So we'll walk through that now. To edit our models and to add attributes, measurements, and transforms, navigate to the models section of the AWS IoT SiteWise console, and then select your model, and then click edit in the upper right hand corner. This will open up a similar page as to when we first created our model. We'll start with attribute definitions. Attributes are static values, such as a device serial number or part number. The name is the same name of the grouping, again, such as serial number. Next, you can enter a default value, which is what will show up if you don't edit the value at the asset level. Finally, you can pick your data type between string, integer, double, or boolean. If you're unfamiliar with those data types, click on the learn more link right above. I will keep this value as a string because my serial numbers contain both letters and numbers. Next, we'll set some measurement definitions. Measurements are time-stamped raw data streams. In our case, this is where we'll enter temperature and vibration values. Temperature is in Fahrenheit, matching the data I'm getting from my equipment. And again, you can choose your data type of string, integer, double, or Boolean. I'll use double which is a floating point number value. Unit is optional. I'll do the same thing for the vibration reading. In this case, I'll leave unit blank, but I'll also choose double for the data type. Next, we have our transforms. These are formulas that map a property's data stream points from one form to another. A common one is turning temperature data that comes in in degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius, or vice versa. We'll skip this one for now, since I want to operate in Fahrenheit and the gravitational constant for vibration. Next, we have our metric definitions, which are again formulas, but this is used to process data points using aggregation formulas across all input data points over a specific time interval, producing a single output data point. A couple of things to note, you can only run metrics on input properties that are integer or double type, and you can't change the time interval of an existing metric. If you wanna do that, you have to create a new metric. A common metric is to find the maximum temperature or maximum vibration each minute, hour, day, or week, whatever is relevant to the insight you're trying to achieve. We have provided a full list of functions and operators available in the SiteWise doc the documentation. Finally, we can create hierarchies, which are parent-child relationships between assets of this model and assets of another model. We'll come back to this, so skip this for now and click Save. Now we can move on from models to assets. An asset can be a device, a piece of equipment, 
or a process that uploads one or more data streams to the AWS cloud, you can configure multiple data streams to each asset as we did when we created a temperature measurement and a vibration measurement in our previous step. To do this at the asset level, we have to map the temperature data stream and the vibration data stream that's coming from our OPC UA server to asset properties. To do this, we will go to our assets in the console and click edit in the top right corner for each one. You'll notice how that now that we have modules for attributes and measurement, which we added at the model level, now we can actually go ahead and tell SiteWise which data streams to connect to which assets in SiteWise using the property alias. The property alias is the path to the variable. In our case, since we connected data from an OPC UA server using a gateway, it's the path to the variable tag under the objects node that starts with a forward slash. If you are ingesting data from other sources, such as IoT core rules or the API, you define your property alias at the time that you set that up. Go ahead and enter in the value for your property alias. and then click Save. We'll repeat the same steps to configure each of our assets and measurements for their respective data streams. Now we have our three widget machines, each connected to their respective temperature data streams and vibration data streams. Okay, so let's talk about hierarchies. Let's say in our example that these three widget machines make up one production line, and I have several other production lines, each with their own widget machines. I set up these relationships in SiteWise using hierarchies which again, create parent-child relationships between assets in different asset models. To do this, I create a new model, which I'll call production lines. Within that model, I'll have two assets, in this case, production line A and production line B. Next, to establish the hierarchy relationship between the production line and the widget machines, I'm going to create an hierarchy definition. In this case, I will call it production line machines, and I will select the widget machines as the hierarchy model and click create model. Now that I have established this hierarchy, I can go into my assets and establish a parent child relationship between these asset types. I'll begin by creating a new asset using my new model type for production line. And I'll create production line A and click create. Once this asset is done creating, I'll be able to edit it and move all of my existing widget machines under the production line asset.
once I've associated all of my existing widget machine assets to this asset parent, click Save. In the left-hand side, I can now see the hierarchical relationship because my widget machines are all associated with their parent of the production line A asset. To recap, temperature and vibration data is now flowing into each widget machine asset, and those assets roll up to their parent asset, the production line. In the next video, we'll visualize this entire virtual representation of my simple manufacturing facility. There are several ways to visualize data from SiteWise, including SiteWise Monitor, a managed web application that is an easy and fast way to get operational insights from dashboards. You can also use the SiteWise API to receive assets from the SiteWise time series data store or use a publish subscribe interface to access your SiteWise data.